Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moykins from Big Mountain Studio, and today we're going to talk about the UI slider. Can you customize the UI slider? Can you change its colors? Can you add images? Yes, you can do all that, and I'm going to show you how to do it. And I'm also going to teach you a way to do it in a reusable way to make it easier for you to make all these changes right through the interface builder. Okay, so let's get started with this single view application that I created for a tipping calculator. Now I have everything set up, I'm just missing one thing. I want to put a slider in across the top here. So let's add that. And here's our slider. And the idea is that the person will just slide this thumb, this is called the, the thumb, this round circle here, thumb point, thumb dial, I don't know. It's called the thumb. <laughs> and they can slide it across to select uh, which tip they want to give, what percentage of a tip they want to give. Okay, so let's start customizing this thing. Now the first thing you notice is the colors don't look like they match the UI. So we can go in here and customize some colors right away. Now here's the thumb right here, so let's change that. And I'm just going to use my, my dropper here, and I want to change it to be the same color as this right here. Now there's a couple of other colors here that we can customize as well. You see that blue color? Well we can customize that. That's called the, the min track. And for that, I think I will use this red color. Yeah, that's good. And this gray looks okay, but I think we can make it look a little bit better if we use our lighter color, same as our, our thumb color here, like that. All right, good. So we have our color set, so that looks a lot better. Now, if I run the application though, let, let me show you something. Okay, when I move this thumb around, it what I what I want it to do is I kind of want it to snap on just those positions that I have preset. You know, the 10%, 15, 18, 20. I'm not going to give the user choices like all the way in between, you know, like here, like there isn't notice there isn't a 5%, it just goes from 0 to 10 and then 10 to 15 and then 18. So they're not even like equally spaced apart either. You know, there's there's 3% between this and there's only 2% between this. So I really just want it to snap right on those parts. Well, the slider itself doesn't have that built in. So we're going to have to program that. Let's see how to do that. First of all, let's see how many spots we, we want it to stop on. We have one, two, three, four, five. So we have five spots or five values that we're interested in. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to change this maximum value to five, like that. And then this, this first value that's your default value on where it starts. We could have it start on zero, like, oops, like that, and then I'll put it here. Now notice if I change it to one, it'll go to say the 10%, the 15, the 18, and then the 20. So really, we actually have six positions if you include the zero. So let's change that to one. So now if we go through here, it should be closer to the values. There we go. So one through five, that's five positions. If we had the zero, that's actually six positions. Whoops, there we go. So we'll keep it as one to five. We could have it zero to four. It doesn't matter because basically I'm going to be looking in the code and I'm going to say, is the slider on one? Okay, use 0%. Is the slider on two? Use 10%. Okay, so this is fine. And let's, let's get the default value as 10%. Now I'll make it 15%, right? Put it right in the middle. All right, that's fine. Now, the next thing we need to solve is when we slide this slider, we, I want it to stop right on 10 or right on 15. Nothing in between. All right, so let's take a look on how to do that. I'm going to go, or actually, you know what? I'm going to need an outlet for this slider. So let's add that first. I already have some outlets for the other controls because after this, I'm going to build it out and make it actually functional. So let's add the slider. And I think just for simplicity, we'll just call it slider. Okay, there we go. And then the next thing I'm going to need, is I'm going to need an action outlet for the slider. And we'll, let's make this an action. And so basically what this does is whenever the value changes, this action will be called. So I'm going to call this action change tip like that. Okay. Oh, look at this. This is this is what happens when 
it's like <laughs> none of the none of the custom fonts are being used anymore. <laughs> it's everything defaults to like the wrong font. These are all custom fonts that I have in here. I'm not sure why it does this. But we might be able to, yeah, see, just get it to re-render. Okay, so let's see here. Now the thing that I want to do is, I want to, first of all, get the value from this, what do I call it, just slider? Yeah. So the slider will have a value, and that is that is the value that is between, we set the maximum as 5, so it's going to be a value between 1 and 5. And this value... Notice here, let's take a look. It's a float. So that means it's, it can be, you know, it's not going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's going to be 1, 1 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. So basically what we want to do is we don't want it to be a float. We want to round it off to an integer. If we round it, use this function called round, round the float, then that will give us like let's take a look here that will round it off so basically say you have a number that's 1.5 it's going to round it to 2 and if it's 1.4 it'll round it to 1 so round float knows how to round up and round down and that will get basically give us the integer that we're looking for and after we get that value we're actually just going to put it right back into the value like that Let's take another look at this. So if I slide it between 0 and 10%, that'll be like 1.5. And this will take the 1.5 and convert it into a 2, and then it'll make the slider value into a 2, which will put it right above 10. Let's see how this works. Okay. Look at that. It, it doesn't even let me uh, go in between. It'll just snap it from one to the other. And that's exactly what we want. Okay, perfect. Now we've done a good job so far. We've given it custom colors and we got it to snap to our values, to our designated values. The next thing we want to do is we want to customize this. Wouldn't it look cool if this circle right here was actually like a, a dollar sign? Let's do that. Now I already have some images. Here, we can change this back. I already have some images that I found and downloaded and put into my assets catalog. And so this thumb right here, that is going to be the image that we're going to use for that the thumb on the slider. And this image, just in case you're interested, I want to give credit to where credit is due because I downloaded this image from the Noun Project and I got it from IconsMind.com. That's the name of the user on the Noun Project. So thank you IconsMind.com for letting me use this image. Now I mentioned earlier that I'm going to show you a way to customize this slider right in, right on the storyboard. So how do we do that? Well, if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll notice a lot of them use interface builder designables. So that's what we're going to use in this case. Let's add a new file. Coco Touch class, because I'm adding, I'm actually adding more functionality on top of the UI slider. So that's why I want to use the Coco Touch class. Coco Touch classes are basically all of these UI classes here. I already have it set to UI slider, and that's a class I'm going to be adding functionality on top of. And we'll just call this designable slider. Okay, we'll get rid of some of these things that we don't need. And the first thing we have to do is if we want to use this inside of the interface builder, is we'll have to mark this class as interface builder designable. Now the property that we need to create, we'll have to accept an image to replace the thumb on the slider. So let's create a, a property for that image. And in order to see it in, inside of the interface builder, we'll have to give it an interface builder inspectable. And that way it'll show up in the attributes inspector. And we'll just call this the thumb image. And it's going to be a type UI image. And remember, we don't have to have an image, it's optional. So I'm going to put that question mark on there to mark it as optional. Now we have to code, when we set that value, what do we actually want it to do? So we're going to use did set. Whoops. There's no autocomplete for did set, which drives me crazy. Now when I set an image, the property I want to change is 
the thumb image property. But in order to do that, you have to call a function instead on the UI slider. So it's UI slider dot set thumb image, and this is the one we want right here. And we'll just give it the thumb image. And then for UI control state, we basically just want it normal. And this is, you know, as it says in the description right here, the normal or default state of the control. Okay, now remember, it can be null too, and null is okay. So if you set the thumb image to null, th or, or nil rather, <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep saying null. I, I work with other languages as well. In Swift, it's called nil. So if you set this image to nil, or if you don't set it at all, it's okay if it sets it to nil. It'll just use the default thumb that's already on the on the slider itself. Okay, good. So what we have to do is, right now, this is using the regular UI slider class, so we're going to change it to a designable slider, which is the one that we just created. Now if we go to the attributes inspector, we'll see a new property called thumb image, and that's the one that we just created. And we had these different images, so I'm just going to pick thumb. And there it is. So that looks great. Now I noticed for this, I worked with a bunch of different sizes. And <laughs> you can get really big images on this for this thumb on this uh, slider. So what I found, I wanted an image that was exactly the same size as the default thumb. And I found that size to be 30 by 30. So remember that. Create an image that is 30 by 30, and it will be the same size as the, the default thumb. Now, let's see how this looks. This looks really good. I like this. We can just slide it back and forth. But watch what happens. I'm going to click down on it. And notice the image changes. And this is also something that's really weird that I found out. Okay, if I have it all the way over here, the image seems to be in the right place, right? As soon as I click down on it, it shifts it over. I have no idea why that happens. <laughs> So, but I'm going to show you how to fix it. So what I want to do is I thought about this and I'm like, why don't I change the thumb color? Use the same image, but change the thumb color for a different state. This is a different state. When I click down on it, the state goes from normal to highlighted on the, on the slider. So we want to give the highlighted state a different image. So let's code that. We basically, let's just copy this same code. And instead of a thumb image, we'll call this the thumb highlighted image. And I want this for the for a different state. And here's the state that I want right here, highlighted. Highlighted state of a control. A control that becomes highlighted when a touch event enters the controls bounds. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're touching the slider so it becomes highlighted. Alright, so let's go back into our storyboard and add that image. So now you see we have a new property here. Whoops, it has to compile the thumb highlighted image. And we're going to choose this highlighted image right here. Okay, so let's run that. Look at that. So now when I click on it, it turns green. I can change it around, let go of it, and it's back to red. That looks beautiful. That's exactly what we want. OK, there's one last thing I wanted to show you, where you can go the extra step and give it even more customization, give this slider even more customization. I don't know if you've seen throughout the iOS operating system, sometimes they have sliders, and they have an icon on this side and an icon on this side, like volume. They have a a speaker with nothing coming out and then over on this side they have an icon of a speaker with sound waves coming out. So those are your min and your max images. You can give it additional customization. You know if we wanted to we could just put like the dollar sign on this one and then for our max image use the double dollar sign. So now as you slide this you know it's more money this way and less money this way. It's something additional that you can add if you want. Uh, if we wanted to use this, I'd probably adjust these constraints so now this, you know to put the 0% at this end and the 20% at this end. This is optional. I'm not going to use this. I think it's, uh, it's not needed in this case because I do have labels underneath the slider to indicate what's happening. But if, if you didn't have those sliders, I mean, if you didn't have those labels, 
then these icons could be a good idea to give the user that additional hint of what it means to slide, what's going to happen when you slide that thumb back and forth. So I'm just going to get rid of those. I just wanted to show you that as one of the options to customizing your slider. Well, that's all I have for the UI slider. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned another way on how to make great UIs by customizing the default controls that Apple gives you. Thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, and consider subscribing because I'll be coming out with more videos like this in the future on customizing your UI and creating great UIs. Thank you.